trial begins. Jurors are finally seated for the Brandon Brown trial. What witnesses are telling them about the night a man was killed in Iowa City. Plus, a new temporary home. One of the last flood recovery projects opens its doors to the smallest residents of Cedar Rapids, where you can give them a fresh start as well. Those are our top stories covering the corridor tonight, but first, here's your weather first forecast. Clouds increasing tonight in just a little bit of rain on the radar, but unlikely that any of that will actually make it to the corridor tonight. Some of those rain showers have been brushing our northern counties, but it's mainly just some sprinkles as this is such a weak system that it's already beginning to fall apart. And it's not going to cool us off at all. In fact, temperatures just keep warming as we go through the week. 30s and 40s for our current temperatures, and we only drop down to 33 by tomorrow morning, not even below freezing. Such a nice change to see some milder weather. Now as we head toward the weekend, a bit more sunshine to start tomorrow, but then eventually rain returns to the forecast and even some thunderstorms. We'll sort it all out coming up in your weather first forecast. And now the top stories covering the corridor tonight. The trial for Brandon Brown is finally underway tonight. And after three days of jury selection, jurors already are hearing a lot in this case. CBS 2 News reporter Mugo Digwe is live at the Johnson County Courthouse in Iowa City with details on today's testimony. Mugo. Both sides gave their opening statements today after questioning and selecting members of the jury. They also had the chance to question a witness today. Prosecutors began by explaining the scene that night on June 21st. You see a man point a handgun at another man's chest. You hear the pop, pop, pop of gunshots in quick succession. Describing how 30-year-old Donnell Lindsay died and why the defendant, Brandon Brown, should be found guilty. But the defense countered, saying the puzzle didn't fit together. Why would two men, who will each claim to be at the same place at the same time, have two vastly different accounts of what took place? Brown's lawyer said each of the state's witnesses will have different accounts of what happened that night and how there's little to no physical evidence linking Brown to the murder. Not a single drop of blood, a strand of hair, or a fingerprint was found that can connect Brandon Brown to the shooting in this case. The prosecution responded by calling their first witness, Byron Fisher, to the stand. Fisher says he was drinking with the victim, Brown, and another man after the NBA championship game. We didn't even get that far. Him and Darnell had some words. He says things got out of hand when Lindsay accused Brown of not knowing how to fight. He says that's when Brown left and came back with a gun and shot Lindsay. Darnell took a couple of steps and then he fell. Were you standing there watching that? Yeah, I seen it. What was your, uh, what was your reaction to that? I was shot. The defense also questioned Fisher. They say he's not credible because he did not call the police after the shooting. The trial continues tomorrow, and we'll be sure to bring you updates. Covering the corridor in Iowa City, Mugo Odigwe, CBS 2 News. Two Johnson County inmates face new charges tonight after a trip to the infirmary. Police say Oliver Girton Jr. and Christopher McKinnon both assaulted a registered nurse on October 18th. It happened at the Iowa Medical and Classification Center in Coralville. McKinnon, or Kinnanen, rather, also accused of assaulting another inmate at the facility just five days later. In Cedar Rapids, the doors to the city's new animal shelter are now open. It is one of the last flood recovery projects in the city since the floods of 08. CBS 2 News reporter Kim Wynn live at the new facility. Kim. That's right, Tiffany. You guys are actually taking a uh, look at the brand new building right behind me. There were lots of folks in the parking lot waiting long before the doors opened here at noon uh, today. Now take a look at this uh, video inside the shelter. Each of the 125 animals, which include dogs, cats and birds, all have new cages. The $4.5 million project has been in the works for the past five years. It's one of the last flood recovery projects that the city's had on their to do list. The old animal shelter was destroyed by the floods of 2008. From damaged cages to equipment, the shelter says bouncing back from the disaster has been a struggle. Everything was gone. I mean, there wasn't anything salvageable from out there. Um, that water went all the way up over the, the ceiling. Besides getting a new building, the shelter says just meeting the basic needs of the animals has been hard, so they're hoping the new building will bring a fresh start. 
And even though the shelter is up and running today, the official grand opening won't be until December 7th. Covering the corridor in Cedar Rapids, Kim Wynn, CBS 2 News. Heinz is preparing to send more jobs to Iowa. The Pittsburgh Post Gazette reports the condiment company is closing plants in South Carolina, Idaho, and Ontario, Canada. It will then move 470 jobs to plants in Iowa, Ohio, and California, as well as Canada. The company has operations in Cedar Rapids, Davenport, and Muscatine. Heinz executives say the move will streamline operations. The Iowa City Public Library is better than ever tonight. Renovations at the building were the focus of an open house this afternoon. The building has a new teen center, more technology for kids, and more self-service checkout stations. Library director Susan Craig says the two years of work are worth the effort. I think things are a lot easier for people to find. Um, the desks are more centrally located, sort of in the middle between um, technology, which staff spends a lot of time nowadays helping people with technology, and the more traditional kinds of collections. Uh, the open house ended at 6 o'clock tonight, but the spaces are there for everyone to check out. CBS2 connects with you. If you see news happen, call us 800-222-KGAN. You can also email your news tips and pictures to news at cbs2iowa.com. An open house going on right now at Linmar Schools as well. The new aquatic center is finally open. This is an artist rendering, but you can see the real thing right now. The public can stop by for a guided tour of the facility until 730. This is the only time the public will be able to walk through the new facility. Hey, speaking of sports, the Iowa men's basketball team is back on the court tonight, already 2-0 on the season, but getting to that point was harder than most people expected. Still, voice of the Hawks, Gary Dolphin, is encouraged. Iowa needed a second-half rally to beat Nebraska-Omaha by eight. On the surface, it was a game that probably shouldn't have been that close, but Dolphin points out the Hawks were able to find a way to win, and that's something they struggled with last year. They would have lost to Nebraska Omaha. They wouldn't have had uh, uh, a way to, they wouldn't have been able to figure it out in the last eight, nine minutes. Uh, now they've got the, all those seniors. The Hawkeyes are driving the basketball, they're getting to the free throw line. Now, they need better perimeter shooting. They knew that coming into the season. They've got more weapons to shoot the basketball. I think that'll come, which will only make the dribble drive that much more lethal. We've got more with Dolph about hoops and football on our website, cbs2iowa.com. That's today's Hawkeye Extra. I'm Jared Aarons. If you like your health care plan, you can keep it. That's been the president's promise during health care reform. Just ahead, the steps he's taking today to try to fulfill that promise. Plus, title time. The volleyball team's going for a state championship in Cedar Rapids today. And Eastern Iowa finally getting some warmer temperatures, but there's also rain in the weekend forecast. We'll have that coming up as we cover the quarter.
President Obama now says insurance companies can keep current health care plans for 2014, but encourages people to shop for new policies. The change comes amid pressure from both major parties. Iowa Republican Senator Chuck Grassley says, quote, the president should work with Congress on something bipartisan that would address health insurance problems without disrupting what does work in our health care system. Democratic Senator Tom Harkin says he's not sure he would have extended the plans and went on to say, if it had been up to me, I'm not certain I would have made this decision, but the president felt it was important to do. My hope, however, is that everyone who has received a cancellation notice will fully and carefully consider their options. Coming up tonight on the CBS 2 News at 10, not all the flashing lights during the holidays are on Christmas trees. Police are watching the roads for intoxicated drivers. What a drunken driving arrest could really cost you tonight on the CBS 2 News 10 at 10. Warm weather is coming, but with some rain attached to it. Chief Meteorologist Craig Christiansen here now with our weather first forecast. It'd be too much to ask for both sunshine and warmer temperatures as we head toward the weekend, but at least it is warmer. That's a really nice change as opposed to what we had for much of the week. 40 degrees in Cedar Rapids, mostly cloudy skies, but no wind anymore. So our feels like temperature, the wind chill also at 40 degrees. We've been watching a little bit of rain up to the north for today as a very weak system passes through eastern Iowa and all it's been able to do uh, either a light shower or some sprinkles right around Highway 20 and areas up to the north. Unlikely that we'll see anything getting down to the ground in the corridor tonight. But for some of our northern counties, uh, perhaps a couple more sprinkles for the rest of the evening. But then overnight, it doesn't even get very cold. 33 degrees for a low. And that's coming after we had nights in the teens earlier this week. So here come the changes as we head toward the weekend. It's all because of the wind direction. Everything shifted out of the south starting yesterday. We kept that going for today. And what little wind there is out there for tonight still coming out of that south to southwesterly direction. And that has kept the temperatures warmer. Low temperatures this morning, 20s and 30s, pretty typical for November. And the highs made it above average. We got up to 51 in Cedar Rapids, 52 for Iowa City, Washington 55, and a mix of mid to upper 40s north of Highway 20. And it's still in the 40s right now. Comfortable weather, at least for most of us. Dubuque, yeah, a little chilly at 35, but 45 in Decorah and also for Charles City, that feels so much nicer than all that Arctic chill that we had earlier this week. And even after yesterday's warm up, we were still able to warm temperatures up tonight to about five degrees more than what we saw for yesterday. Let's look at that system on the Midwest map. You'll see it's really just falling apart here. It's really not going to be that uh, long lived over the area. Clouds staying with us for the rest of the night, but the rain showers are uh, pretty much already done. Temperature is not going to change much as we get into tomorrow. We'll still be in the 50s. A little bit warmer in Des Moines, but we'll see uh, mainly the low 50s out across eastern Iowa. However, for Saturday, it's even warmer than what we're going to see for tomorrow. We're looking at 60s in Des Moines, 70s down in Wichita. Wouldn't that be nice? We could get some of the 70s up there, but we'll take 60s. That's going to be great as we head into the weekend, but it also comes with some rain. Let's check out the hour by hour forecast and when we're going to see some of those showers. Not much happening overnight through tomorrow morning, just those clouds and then the sun does break out a little bit for set, uh, for Friday morning and continues to go through the rest of tomorrow. It's Saturday that we start to see things changing. Rain developing for Saturday morning. Showers pushing into the corridor 10 a.m. could be a bit earlier than that, but that's uh, when the computer models are starting those showers. And this is going to be strong enough to even produce some thunderstorms for Saturday afternoon and Saturday night and it will continue into Sunday as well. And Sunday, we could see perhaps some stronger storms in eastern Iowa, and there's even a threat for some severe weather in the Midwest. Now, where it looks like the severe storms are the most likely to occur is going to be east of the Mississippi River. Right now, it does not look like eastern Iowa would have a threat for any severe activity on Sunday, as that line is just to the east of us. But we'll have to keep a close watch on it, as if that moves just a little bit to the west, some of our communities might see some stronger storms for the end of the weekend. So make sure to check the forecast as we head through the next couple of days. Tonight, mostly cloudy, sprinkles up to the north. That's all the system's going to do for us tonight. And then tomorrow, another mild day, great looking November weather with mostly sunny skies, highs in the 50s. Saturday's when that rain starts, starts in the morning, and then those thunderstorms keep rolling all the way through Sunday. Late Sunday into Monday, it gets colder but not as cold as it looked even last night. Last night we had some teens for the lows next week, now 20s, and instead of low 30s, upper 30s Monday and Tuesday. 
Yeah, it's a cool down, but could be worse. Wow, 60 degrees yeah. in November. <laughs> Very warm for this weekend. Very warm. We'll take it. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. thanks. We are quickly closing in on our next Facebook Fan of the Week. Karen, Dottie, and Brian all have a shot at a good meal from Wild Hog Saloon and Eatery. We announce the winner tomorrow, so head to our Facebook page.